Hello, John. Hello, Oliver. And today we're going to talk about the horse manure crisis of 1894. A long, long time ago, we depended very heavily on horses and uh, New York. London and major cities around the world use them for transportation. In London, you had something like at one stage in 1894, you had 50,000 horses going around the street. In New York, you had 100,000. Um, and those horses eat a lot. They urinate a lot. And there was a lot of manure on the streets. And so they ended up with a manure crisis. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to compare the pollution of 1894 with our streets. A bit of smoke that we have from cars today. That's right. That's this, yeah. yeah, well, um, a pollution has uh, occupied people in 1894, probably more so than nowadays uh, from the point of view of uh, all the horses that was used, and including in Dublin, because I remember Guinnesses had horses pulling their stouts okay. when I was young, and they had boats going up and down the, the River Liffey loaded with, with boats, I don't know where they were going to maybe um, kind of boats loaded with Guinness. I think they were going down to put them on other boats or something. That's the way they did things. And horses, I remember a fella used to come when I worked in Bass uh, in the um, office at the time before I got out on the road. And uh, he used to have his horse outside the door, he'd come in he come in, he delivered around Moore Street and places like that and he come in for his, for his uh, points. Uh, because there often returns and uh, points that you'd have to sort of fi fizzle the stuff out with your teeth because there were often be hops in it. <laughs> so uh, he came in and the horse then had something over his, his oats and that, you know, so they were well looked after. But right enough, one of the good things from the point of view of the manure, although there wouldn't be enough gardens in New York for that, but here with the horses and the manure, uh, they were great for, for gardeners. Because um, it was it was um, it was good for for the cabbages and everybody had had stuff in their gardens. We had it as well when yeah. I was young, and uh, we used to go and cut turf. Uh, we didn't have a horse there; we had an ass and a creel. So uh, I presume they would have done the same, you know, <laughs> what, what they needed to. But I, as far as I remember, uh, in in my young days, it seemed to be healthy enough. But perhaps it wasn't. Uh, we 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 got used to it uh, because we were always mucking about. Uh, so actually, it makes you uh, uh, immune to sort of various other things because you've been mucking about. Do you get me drift? Okay. Uh, so, but the manure uh, in New York would have, and London would have posed a problem because uh, they wouldn't be able to um, take it and up and then use it for the gardeners and stuff like that. That would have been the, the way to do it. Uh, but of course, doing things right often escapes those in charge. And uh, with the result, people got diseases. It is. So there was an outbreak of typhoid in uh, New York. And That's so, right, and it was in this country too, and it was a killer. Yeah, and so what was happening basically was... And tuberculosis. Yeah, but... <clears throat> probably come from all this manure. Yeah, so there was manure all over the streets of uh, New York, and there used to be uh, guys, if a lady wanted to cross the street, there would be a guy paid to put a shovel <laughs> to make way. <laughs> God, oh my. So you can imagine a woman with a long dress... Back in those days, they had long dresses. That's okay. right. They looked very elegant. Yeah, they looked beautiful, you know. But the thing is, anyway, they'd have to lift up their dress probably. But they'd have to um, pay a guy anyway to cross the street, give him whatever, he, a shilling, I don't know what they got, back in those days. Um, but anyway, so the problem was that there was 100,000 horses going around. Um, some, some of them were using, used as taxis and others were used for transport of goods. Okay, And the problem was that if a lot of horses would die on the streets in the course of their work okay and then it might be a few days to a week in the baking heat before a horse will be removed what a dangerous so the mixture of manure urine and dead animals on the streets the smell must have been incredible it would it would be incredible because of the heat the heat i mean even in new york and uh, it was a you'd see uh, children uh, that were in the city that have these hydrants and they were, they were uh, keeping cool with the water coming out of these yeah. these things it was a facility for them uh, but um so you can imagine the heat and horses going around in the summer it would uh, you know it would be a fairly tough 
tough on their stamina, you know, because, uh, like, it'd be very hot. And with the, with the skyscrapers and that, the, the kind of the air is not as, as good. Exactly. You so know. as a result, there was an outbreak of typhoid and um, there was many, they had many uh, committees and many summits to see what were they going to do. There was the, 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 the thinking at the time, because they weren't thinking of the motor car. They were thinking, if this continues in 50 years' time, we're going to have 10 foot high of manure all over the streets. <laughs> <laughs> you see, so, the, I presume the experts were painting Armageddon, the, the worst part. They were the same as they're doing now. Uh, correct, so, yeah. And the thing is, so we think of the word, you know, taxi cab, the word cab. Okay? Yeah. So back in the day, in, in the 1800s, um, there was uh, the Hansen cab. The Hansen cab was um, uh, basically a, a, a taxi cab, which was pulled by a horse. Basically. That's right, yeah. And they were in nice cushions and all the rest. They so used to have the coaches in the old West films. And they were in there up and held up by robbers. Yeah. And uh, your money, or, your, or no, not your money, or your wife, <laughs> uh, they'd be looking for valuables. Yeah. But the and uh, they'd be taken off, and they often used to be seen to be hiding, and the next thing is, and uh, they were, uh, then the, the good fellas was off, after the, the robbers, and it was all this. Yeah. Uh, but horses was, was not me, four or six horses pulling the, pulling the, uh, the, the, with the people sitting in and, and having a conversation. And suddenly there was robbers and they were all up the creek but they were a paddle. And like, if, if you look at the motor car, when someone says it's, 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 it's a six horsepower or it's a four horsepower, whatever it is, <laughs> I don't know much about cars. It's all horsepower. It all well, comes from horses. Everybody interested in the horsepower. Uh, what, what horsepower is she? Oh, she, she's uh, such a horsepower. Ah, well, then she won't go anywhere. I mean, uh, you'd like a good horsepower. And funny enough, boats had horsepower as well for their engines. Okay. In whole time. And so a good boat had um, maybe 60 horsepower. And she would have bunks. And I used to look to see the windows in the bunks. And this horsepower. So everything was based on horsepower. I don't know if it still is. Uh, mm. I don't think it is as much now. You don't. It? No, it's, it's something that I used to CC or something. I, yeah, it's CC. But but the thing is, I, it's something that I did here. My father used to used to deal in cars in the nineteen seventies. You know, and he, I would hear him talk about horsepower. That's right. And I was thinking to myself, what's that? Got to, what's the car got to do with a horse? <laughs> but the, 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 the horse. But funny enough, uh, you still have pollution of one kind or another, and in cities, uh, it's not the healthiest place to live. Um, you might have apartments and all the rest of it, uh, but with the amount of traffic that's going now on the road, um, you'd have a certain amount of pollution. So they want electric cars, but there's more, we did a video about that, there's more pollution from the batteries when they have to be recycled. Where are they going to go? Yeah. It'd be a, a, a battery mountain. There will be a battery. Well, well, they're actually, they're, they're, they're making good strides in that area for recycling them. I've done some research on that and they're actually doing quite well. But if you go back to the horses, um, so it must have been like, a, like even in Ireland, the cities in Ireland, the small towns in Ireland, you can remember like the, 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 the March day, for example. That's how bro, so ca- somebody would be in the street. Yeah. So if somebody wants to know what it would be like on a full time basis, go to any country town. There's a March usually one day a month. Right. OK. And you will see the cow dung, the horsemen who are all over the street. That's right. OK. Multiply that by a couple of hundred, and that's what it was like on a daily life for people. It was, and but uh, so like there was always problems for people. And the funny thing is, the people had a chance to um, travel because uh, you know walking was was uh, difficult enough with the with the way the roads were. Probably uh, you could step on horse manure. Uh, so uh, they, they went in their cabs and they were very comfortable cabs and the lad was up above and he usually have a cap and a, a nice uniform that's right and uh, it, there was a certain amount of etiquette attached to it and he might hop off then from down there and open one of the, the doors and people went to mass and, and horse and traps in my time well, yeah there'd be a lot of horse and traps outside churches um, and, and they were well to do if they had a horse and a trap rather than a um, what they call it, um, a genus. A genus was a very skittery animal. We'll come back to the genus now in a second. The yeah. thing is, anyway, so the, the Hansen cab was actually patented. So, so somebody invented it, take, took out a patent, and that gave him a monopoly all across New York City. Imagine that, isn't that great? Yeah, what it was, he was, he was ahead of the, the posse there, this patent, and it was a great thing to be able to patent things. Yes. And then your, 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 what, what, your good idea come up with is, is secure. Yeah. 
Well worth it. But the thing about it was anyway, so then paintings... And you often painting a brand name too. Go That's ahead. a trademark. The thing about it is anyway, um, so the thing about patents and trademarks and inventions and the whole lot, there's always somebody coming behind you with a better idea. And of course, Daimler and Henry Ford came along to solve the horse manure crisis. They did. Within 12 years, it was sorted out. The car had, had arrived. People were buying cars. They were forgetting about the horses. They and, were. And, and they had a new kind of pollution, which lasted the next 100 years, which is the one we're complaining I about now. I think there was only four, horses, or four cars in America one time, and it was an accident with two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, I, I think they had that right, that right card. There was four cars. Four America, cars. And, and, and there was an accident with two of them. It was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but you'd, you'd uh, but I mean, um, oh, a person, a person, there was a fellow uh, that, uh, when there was a census done one time, his occupation was he was a car owner. <laughs> So that was considered a very good thing, uh, to, to have four wheels and to be able to go places and but that type of thing. Your memory of horses in Ireland, anyway, you can remember people going to Mass in the horses. Oh, I do, and it, it, it didn't yeah. seem to cause that much of a problem there. I remember, I don't remember any problem, except manure is good for, for gardeners, and everybody had something planted in their garden, if yeah. they had the garden at all, and even in the city. Like the last, time, the last time I seen a man going to the shop, okay, what a horse and car was 1994 and his name was Jimmy Sinan and he was in County Kerry and Jimmy had a donkey okay and he had a donkey a donkey and cart okay and he used to go into town and you'd see him smoking away and he'd be he'd be going at a nice slow pace he'd be quite comfortable okay correct and it was a, it was a, it was a nice way of life of course it was it was very no, relaxing there was no r- r- rush he just says he does it and he got his groceries or whatever he got and they were usually in brown paper parcels and into the into the into the little acid cart and uh, so on and off he went and depending on the weather he might have to wear an overcoat and uh, be togged out for 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 uh, for the snow or whatever was happening but uh, the donkey was a very faithful animal he was but the thing is anyway you were talking yeah. about the genus so the, oh, genet, the genet was pretty skittery. The genet is a cross between a donkey and a horse, or a donkey ah, and a pony. Yeah. Oh, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's, he, he could he could book lep as quick as Ankan. He could. He, they were very flighty, um, but they were strong animals. They were. They had a mixture of the two breeds, yeah. you see. But the thing about them was, anyway, there was, there was, a, there was a family down there um, in Kerry, and they had, they had about three or four donkeys, uh, and they had one genet. And the genet loved the chalk ice, okay? So what used to happen was, um, after his day... Working in the bog, the genet, okay, get taken out the turf. He would be expected afterwards to drop his owner down to the pub, okay. And so he used to drop the owner down to the pub, which was three miles away. But as a treat for the genet, they used to stop off at, at the local shop, which was a country road, uh, and get the genet a chalk ice, okay. She the genet loved it, and the genet loved the cold chalk ice. And then what used to happen was if the genet didn't get the chalk ice. He'd refuse to move until he got it. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. They have something up here. They have something in- instinct. Yeah. Fantastic. So if he didn't have the money for the chalk ice, he used to have to get the chalk ice on credit because the genet would not budge. And then, do you know the saying, stubborn as an ass? That's right. There, there's a half, there's half an ass in, 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 in the genet, you know? Aye, there is. That's right. But, um, but yeah, so you, you kind of miss, I suppose... The only thing we, it was a very leisurely period when they had the horses because uh, it, it didn't seem to, uh, didn't hear any uh, business of, of um, health being mentioned in the newspapers and uh, this sort of woe be gone stuff that we hear nowadays. I mean, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're obsessed with pollution nowadays uh, to the extent that you can kind of, I turn off, I don't want to hear a one word about it. Yeah. You know, because it means that you'd. Uh, if you were to listen to that rubbish, uh, you'd be afraid to go out in case you'd be poisoned with cars or something. Did you ever hear the like? That's the thing. Yeah. Um, but th- if you look down in uh, Smithfield, Smithfield, dude, there was there was a horse fair there, which was going on for four hundred years. That's right. Okay. Um, and it was going on. It was the first Sunday in every month. That's now been cut down to because of commercialization down to two Sundays in every. I think it's every year. It's twice a year. Aye. 
I think it's one, one every six months or something. They've there, was, there was great, uh, great uh, interest in that, and there was a, another kind of a horse fair in Ballinasloe. I remember it myself. Mm. And to be horses and people from the travelling community there and other ones as well and testing horses and dealers and all the rest of it. And it was often a middle fella that was going to try to bargain. Mm. Uh, there was all that going on and I kind of liked it. The thing, the, the, the horse was, in the was 70s. Very, very good. But the thing is, right, what's happened, okay, is you have a lot of movements in Ireland, animal movements, okay, which some of them are quite radical, okay. You've got, so what happened with Smithfield was there was a few things. There was one, the, com- the local commercial interests came first. So they built Chief O'Neill's Hotel down there, which is, has a different name now. They did a travel lodge, not travel lodge, some kind of lodging place for, for students, a generator, I think it was called. I think that's gone now as well. But um, they built up the whole area and then the commercial interests came first. And of course, people started complaining about the smell, like 1894. Once a month, all the apartments built all around that's the right, place. That's right, yeah, that's right. They were complaining about the smell of horse poo. Okay. Correct, and but funny enough, talking about the smell, when I walked in the spot in O'Keefe's, O'Keefe's used to uh, meat and bone meal, and there was a smell coming from there that knock you down. Uh, but it was supposed to keep colds away, and the older folk didn't mind it, but the younger folk didn't mind it. Okay. And there was a meeting one time in one of the halls there, and I, I was dipping twice to go and talk. Which we did, and uh, so the the way uh, I talked about the fact that the coals, and I said to the ones, hey, "Have you had coals?" Uh, this type of thing, you know. So it was one of these talks, and there was I tried to listen to them. Do you get me drift? Mm-hmm. And uh, so with the result uh, that they were all happy enough, and there was a bit of a clap. So I said, you know, you, you've got children, uh, don't mind the smell, that, that keeps the cold away. Otherwise it costs you a fortune with doctors. This is the thing. You've you know, got a sort of, people don't know, you see. But the thing about the horse fair anyway down in Smithfield, which had been going for 400 years, as I say, it's been reduced. Well, that was long enough, wasn't it? It was, but the thing is, it's a, tr- a tradition. I don't think it should die out. And But the problem with it is that you had the commercial interests, the local commercial interests, and they were complaining you had the vegan movement, um, because they say it's cruelty to animals. You had the animal cruelty crowd. So you had, you had a collection of groups... Vested interests. With vested interests, who came together. Very good point, vested interests. Came together, and now we have the horse fair, which is only twice a year. Twice a year. And it was quite a tourist attraction. Of course it was. The same as a lot of the uh, things that did away with the tram and Holt and the, and the Narda Gage uh, Railway in Donegal, they would have been great tourist attractions and useful for the people to, uh, to, to not be on the road to be able to go on and a leisurely place on these trains. It was on them. Yeah. Marvellous experience. And the trams as well. If you went upstairs, you'd be blue with the cold, especially in the winter. Yeah. And drowned it, maybe it was raining. Uh, but you were downstairs. Now, and it was a conductor and a, and a driver. My last question to you is, did you ever own a horse or a donkey? Uh, no. Did your family have a horse or a donkey? Well, we always had the use of uh, those. And uh, we always had the use. Uh, when you say the use, do you mean you hire a donkey? Well, no, no. The, the father must have probably got it for nothing being a guard. You know, because we had the bog, and I, I presume, I don't know what way he was able to arrange that, but but we had the bog, and, and we, we had the place full of turf, so we had turf. The smell of turf, we used to like the smell of turf, funny enough, in the fire. Okay, very good, very good. So we, 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 we were self-sufficient. Yeah. So I suppose, look, people are complaining about pollution in cities, but we never had it so good. Correct and right, and uh, if you want to live in the city, you're going to have a certain amount of it. And there's no point in thinking that you're living in the country if you're living in, in apartments and uh, where there's a lot of traffic. You're, you're, you're not going to um, have, have, have it uh, like as if you're in the country. You, you've, you, have, you have a choice there, that's where you choose to live, so you, you've got to take the consequences. I mean, in, in cities, what you're, what you're hearing basically is the noise of engines and cars reverberating from the buildings, they're echoing, right? Okay? Correct. And they're bouncing around the city. I wonder what the sound was like in New York when there was loads of ho- lots of horses. Well, I'd say it was it was all right. I mean, the horses uh, would, were was just um, doing their business as as they went about, 
uh, and uh, but there wouldn't be this noise and this um, noise that we have now. I mean, in New York, you mm, airplanes uh, going tither and yon, and you so you've noise coming from all quarters. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't live in it in a fit. Unless you got used to noise, and who could get you couldn't have a conversation. I remember being someplace, wherever it was, was that noise, you couldn't have a conversation. Oh, yes, we were looking at a house one time uh, outside Kells, nice four bed bungalow. And uh, oh, I said, That's very nice. And then we we're outside at the very lake ground. I had to shout, I couldn't hear what the traffic now. This is in outside Kells, the, the traffic going to say Cavan and other. Well, I said, God, you couldn't live here, so you, you couldn't be out in the garden, you couldn't hear birds singing or nothing. Mm-hmm. So that was out. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sean. Thank you very much, Oliver.